In the early 990s, Basil II, the Byzantine Emperor, emerged as a formidable military strategist. His unwavering commitment to discipline transformed his troops into a well-oiled machine. A crucial factor in the successful campaign against Bulgaria, where key enemy fortresses fell. However, by late 994, a pressing crisis demanded Basil's attention in the east. A Fatimid army, led by the formidable governor Monutakin, had crippled local Byzantine forces, pushing Duke Michael Burtzis to retreat to Antwerp. The vital city of Aleppo faced a dire situation. Besieged by the Fatimid governor of Syria, risking the unraveling of centuries of Byzantine progress in the region, recognizing the urgency, Basil spent a rigorous winter recruiting and drilling his troops as the snow melted. A swift and meticulously planned march to relieve Aleppo unfolded. Astonishingly, a journey that typically took two months was completed in a mere 16 days. Surprising and outmaneuvering one you take in, the Fatimid general, caught off guard, hastily lifted the siege and retreated to Damascus. With Aleppo saved without a single sword swing, Basil pressed on in 995, reclaiming Fatimid-held territories in Syria and besieging the significant port city of Tripoli. Meanwhile, in the west, the newly appointed Duke of Thessaloniki, Gregory Terranites, struggled against the advances of Emperor Samuel, leading to a tragic defeat in Gregory's demise. News of these setbacks reached Basil in Tripoli. Despite facing challenges, he lifted the siege and, on his deliberate march back to Constantinople, strategically visited influential Anatolian aristocrats. These unannounced visits served to reaffirm loyalties. Amid Basil's reforms aimed at aiding small landowners, diminishing aristocratic influence, in Constantinople, urgent state matters occupied Basil's time. Samuel, however, continued his successful campaign, defeating generals like John Chaldos. In 996, Samuel ventured deep into enemy territory, wreaking havoc as far as the Peloponnese, recognizing an opportunity to strike a decisive blow. Basil appointed the relatively unknown Nicephorus Oranus to intercept the Bulgarian army. The plan succeeded brilliantly. Oranus, capitalizing on a ford discovered on the river Spurchios, executed a masterful night attack. The Bulgarians, unprepared and in disarray, suffered a crushing defeat, with Samuel narrowly escaping. Despite this victory, Basil accepted peace terms, mindful of rising tensions in the east. Basil's prior expedition into Syria triggered a response. From the Fatimid Caliph Al-Aziz, however, fate favored the Byzantines, as the Al-Aziz's fleet perished in a harbor fire, and the Caliph himself died in 996. Capitalizing on Fatimid infighting, Basil replaced ineffective commanders like Michael Burtzis with the aggressive Damian Dallasenos, who successfully captured several Fatimid fortifications. The narrative shifts to early 997, expanding operations in Syria. Byzantine assistance fueled an anti-Fatimid revolt in Tyre, while a major fire in Apamea has ended an opportunity for Dallasenos. Despite some setbacks, including the loss of Apamea to forces from Aleppo, Basil continued strategic operations. The Battle of Apamea unfolded. A clash with the Fatimid forces on the banks of the Orontes River. Despite initial success, the lack of discipline in the Byzantine ranks became apparent, leading to a massacre and the death of Dallasenos. Fortunately for the Romans, Fatimid internal issues prevented full exploitation of their victory as the war with the Bulgarians resumed in 997. Basil faced challenges on two fronts, yet it would be these very challenges that would shape Basil to into the greatest emperor of the Macedonian dynasty. The tale of Basil's resilience, strategic brilliance, and the ever-changing tides of war continues in the next episode. Marking a pivotal chapter in Byzantine history, don't forget to like the video and subscribe.